Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chuan Hua Chen. I'm the Senior Director of Architecture Division at Andes Technology. And uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about the DSP, or so-called P, uh, ISA extension uh, we are going to uh, propose to uh, RISC-V. And uh, let me introduce Andes Technology first. Uh, Andes Technology is a Taiwan-based CPU IP design company. And uh, there have been uh, over 2.5 billion Andes Core embedded SOCs shipped in the world uh, in uh, many uh, diverse applications. And uh, Andes Technology has been incorporated for 13 years. And uh, we have developed uh, three versions of our uh, uh, own ISA architecture. And uh, now we want to use the solutions we have developed in these years and uh, take a risk fine to uh, those application markets. And uh, we are an uh, active and major contributor to the risk fine tools such as GCC, Bing Uto, Newlib, and recently LLVM and uh, LLD. And, uh, and to help develop the uh, risk fine uh, DSPP extension ISA, uh, and uh, we are in the process of uh, establishing a P extension test group. And we have set up the charter of the uh, test group to be first define and rectify uh, PACSIN DSP extension instructions you know, and operating on uh, XLAM bit general purpose integer registers for, uh, small, uh, sm for embedded RISC V processors. And the second is to uh, define uh, compiler intrinsic functions that can be used directly in uh, high-level programming languages. And uh, I will be the chair of the test group, and the co-chair of the test group uh, will be determined soon. And initially, the DSP ISA uh, uh, proposal uh, will be based on uh, ND star, uh, the NDS V3 DSP ISA. And this ISA has the f uh, following features. And first, uh, the, up the instruction will operate on uh, general purpose integer registers. And uh, the instruction will support saturation and rounding. And uh, it, has, it supports a fixed point and integer data types. And it contains CD instructions that are uh, working on 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit element sizes. And it also actually contains, although we call it uh, PPEC CD, but actually it also contains non CD DSP instructions operating on 16 bit, 32 bit, and 64 bit data types. And the 64 bit data types operations, uh, uh, including unsigned and signed uh, addition and subtraction, and signed and unsigned uh, multiplication add. And I list the two examples here. And this is a simple illustration of 16-bit uh, CD instructions on a 32-bit architecture. It will ha have the so-called uh, uh, two elements together. So in a vector instruction set turn, this is a vector length of two. Okay. And it supports the uh, operations of uh, multiplication, addition, subtraction, uh, left, right, shift, minimum, maximum, clip, absolute, and compare. And this is uh, also a simple illustration of A, B, C, D instructions. It just do more operations. Uh, and it uh, supports the addition, subtraction, min minimum, and maximum, unpack, absolute, and compare. And when compared with the previous slide, you can see that actually the, the operation supported for different elements can be different. It has, doesn't have to be the same. Okay, this uh, is an illustration of non cindy instructions that uh, does uh, two 16-bit operations and then do two 32-bit uh, additions or subtractions. So they have a total of four operations in the instruction. Okay, so when uh, using this instruction and compare with a uh, baseline code sequence, and we can see a uh, uh, speed up uh, about six times. 
And this is a similar instruction uh, that uh, does uh, two 16-bit multiplications, but now this time uh, it adds uh, two 64-bit numbers together, uh, or subtractions together. And uh, when compared with the uh, baseline code sequence, we can see a, a 12 times speed up. And uh, people may ask, you know, why we decided to use general purpose integer register instead of a separate, wider length uh, dedicated registers? And because uh, we think uh, a GPR based CD uh, approach is more efficient and has uh, is a l more efficient, lower power DSP solutions for embedded system running in uh, application in various domains, such as uh, audio, speech, decoding, and processing. IoT sensor data processing, or wearable fitness devices, etc. Okay, and this approach actually addressed the need for high-performance general code processing, as well as digital signal processing, just in one processor using general-purpose registers. And uh, to help facilitate the use of these DSP instructions, yeah. And uh, we want to. We have take. We are taking three strategies. Okay. The first one is to provide data types and instruction that can be recognized and used by compiler. Yeah, that's what we hope that uh, these instruction can be eventually directly used by compilers, not uh, uh, used uh, uh, by uh, programmers. Okay. Just compiler can generate them. And the second approach, you know, for the part that compiler cannot be recognized, we want to provide intrinsic functions for software developers to use DSP instructions directly in uh, high-level language programming like C and C++. Right? And the third, for more complex functions, uh, com more complex or common DSP functions and algorithms, we want to provide optimized DSP libraries or middlewares to help the user to use them. Okay. Um, And about 64-bit data types, uh, and uh, in our proposal, we decide to use pairs of GPS uh, on a 32-bit architecture. And then for 64-bit architecture, you can just use a one register to represent the data type. And the 64 data type is important uh, uh, because uh, we need it for compiler to generate DSP instructions uh, automatically. And uh, Although uh, using the pair registers uh, in, uh, to represent 64 data type in the instruction actually increase the number of source and destination operands uh, in the instruction. But you can see the instruction itself is just a hardware software interface. And the implementation can still implement a register file with two read port and one write port and use multiple cycles to read out the source operand and write the destination register to implement this instruction to support this 64-bit data type. And with this approach, even with this approach, I think the performance of uh, using the 64-bit data type uh, is better than the performance of the instruction that does, does not have this kind of 64 data types. And now let's look at some real-world applications uh, that uh, of our DSP ISI extension. And we are using our uh, V3 uh, experience uh, and to show you our performance numbers. And the first application is Hilux MP3 decoder. And for this application, we do not use hand optimization. We just uh, directly use compilers and with the DSP extension and without the DSP extension to compare the performance number. The performance number is the mi million cycles per second to decode MP3 music. And now we get a cycle reduction uh, of 54% uh, by using the DSP instruction and directly recognized by com compiler. And uh, it's uh, more than two times speed up. And for this application, they're using DSP instructions. And actually, 70% of the cycles are spent on instruction. They're using 64 bit data type. They're using pair registers. And the second application is G.729 codec. And this time, in addition to compiler optimization, we also uh, use uh, hand optimized using intrinsic functions that write in the C code and to optimize the codec. And then uh, you can see that for uh, encode and both encode and decode, we get a 
cycle reduction percentage are more than 70 percent. Uh, this is, uh, and uh, this is another codex uh, example, uh, AMR y, uh, w, y band. It's adapted multi-ray Y band codec. Uh, it is uh, widely uh, used in uh, many uh, mobile protocols and networks, including LTE. And uh, similar to G.729, we also, in addition to compiler optimization, we use hand uh, and intrinsic functions to optimize the codec. And uh, we compared it on three uh, different CPUs. Uh, and uh, these are our V3 CPUs. And uh, N10 is a uh, CPU that do not have the DSP ISA and is a single issue uh, core. And D10 uh, supports the DSP ISA and it's a single issue core. And D15 uh, supports the DSP ISA and it's a superscalar two issue core. Okay, and um, you can see that uh, for encode, we get a speed up 4.7 times and decode 4.1 times. It's all more than four times. And for dual issue code, we get uh, in code of a speed up uh, of uh, close to seven times, and uh, in decode speed up uh, close to six times. Okay, now, and uh, you can see this is the uh, performance speed up of our DSP libraries. Uh, we actually have uh, eight different categories, the basic fu function, complex function, controller, filtering, matrix, statistics, and transforms, and ut utilities, okay? The blue dot shows the average uh, speed up of all functions in a category, and the red dot shows the maximum speed up uh, of all functions in a category, okay? And, and among the eight uh, categories, uh, there are four categories, the the basic, the complex, the filtering, and the statistic cat cat statistics category has uh, an average speed up of close to or uh, more than two times. So on average, uh, the all functions in the disciplinary you know, has a speed up 1.79 times and with the maximum speed up 5.51 times. And with uh, all these, uh, these performance numbers, I hope that I, uh, I can give you uh, more confidence about the uh, benefit and the usefulness of uh, the DSP ISA extension uh, we proposed to RISC-V. And then what's the status of the P uh, extension test group? Actually, we are in the process of uh, discussion with the technical community chair and the vice chair to create a test group. Okay, hopefully uh, no, and they can agree and then you will create uh, soon. And then after the test group is created, the test group will arrange by weekly meetings and public invite people to participate in the discussions and to see if there's any other good ideas that can be contributed to the extension. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is, concludes my talk. <laughs> Very interesting stuff. I wonder if you could say a little bit more about compiler support because one of the, um, your work, I know you do a lot of work on GCC and LLVM and in particular some of the embedded, what's known as the embedded standard for C provides extra functionality to handle this sort of processor. So things like the frac keyword within C. Do you have, ha, have you made any progress on supporting that sort of thing to make it easier to take advantage of this using uh, C constructs. Uh, can you repeat the last part of the question? So what I'm, I, I know you do a lot of, you're a big contributor to the compiler work, mm -hmm. LLVM and GCC, and I wondered how much of the optional features you can add to C that are, are sta standardized, you've, whether you've made any progress on supporting those for RISC-V. Uh, I think the important part is the data types. It's we support the data type uh, correctly. And then uh, it depends on the, the, 
you know, we try to use compiler to recognize the patterns as much as possible. Yeah, and then for the part that cannot be recognized, then uh, we provide uh, intrinsic functions and hope that and that can be easily used by software developed directly in the C programs. Okay. I don't know if that answers your questions. I, I, perhaps we'll discuss later, but thank you very much. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure I understood the nature of the operations you were performing, but is there any overlap with the vector operations that were presented yesterday? Uh, I'm talking about CIND operation, not vector operations. So it's nothing to do with like a special case of the vector extension on only 64 bits or the It's different, way. yeah. But in the, in the presentation, no, I just w used uh, some similar technology. For example, vector lens, you can view, you know, uh, every time you do uh, two CD operations or four CD operations, that it is, I think it's equivalent you know, in concept to the vector lens concept in the, the vector extension. Okay, yeah. Thank you.